Did you know that some cafes are producing upwards of six tonnes per week of carbon dioxide in their cafe? Only about half a percent of that is paper cup wastage. What's causing the rest of it? Well, find out what it is and what we can do about it in this video. You know, one of the first things um, I wanted to do when I came to Seven Miles um, is to look into what paper cups, what impact paper cups have on the environment. It's one of the things I've heard about for a long time. People say, oh, it's, it's one of the biggest problems of our time. We see images floating across the television screen of trams filled with paper cups and saying, this is an amazingly huge amount of waste. We've got to do something about it right now, um, which by the way, I do agree with. From a cafe's perspective or a coffee shop's perspective, is that actually a significant portion of the waste generated from a cafe or are there other things that we can go after that may actually have a better impact on the environment as a whole. So one of the ways that we can do that is by performing what's known as a life cycle analysis. In very simple terms, this is what they call a cradle to grave analysis of everything that happens in any given process. I did it on cafes and coffee shops. So it wasn't just on paper cups, it was on paper cups, bacon and egg rolls. It was on the espresso machine and a whole bunch of different categories. And we computed ultimately a big wheel um, that looked at what the individual carbon dioxide emissions were from those portions of that wheel. We found that really all of the carbon dioxide footprint of a cafe can be summed up into three major categories. The biggest one is energy. That is the energy used to literally heat up the machine to produce water to produce coffee. Water has one of the highest heat capacities of any substance known to mankind. To heat up one gram of water, one degree Celsius, takes about four kilojoules of energy. So all that energy being pumped into boil water, that is by far the biggest impact in terms of carbon dioxide footprint on the environment. The second one after that is milk usage, uh, particularly for the Australian market where 70, 80% of us are actually drinking coffee with milk in it. Milk itself to produce milk actually has a quite a heavy footprint in the environment. All the cows that are required to produce all that milk require growing, require feeding. Um, emit methane, which is a huge, surprisingly huge impact on the environment. Methane is a terrible greenhouse gas. So that actually has a huge impact on the environment. We can talk about that in a second. And the third major one is, is food wastage, food and water wastage. Food waste refers to stuff that's literally uneaten, thrown in the bin, ends up in a tip in a very similar way that paper cups will end up in a tip, those ones that can't be recycled. Um, the waste here is generated, or the carbon dioxide footprint from the waste is generated by those materials breaking down in the tip. So it's basically larger chain organic molecules eventually breaking down into smaller things of carbon. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and methane, which is CH4. I suppose the next portion to talk about is, well, if these three things are the biggest impact, are there things that we can do to minimise the impact? Because again, small changes in any big category will have much greater impact than big changes in any small category. So one thing that has a huge impact on the environmental penalty of a cafe and restaurant is literally just turning the machine off at night. We found that in our analysis that if you have five hours between service, in other words, if you have five hours between when you finish service in the afternoon or the evening, and by the time you wake up and start serving coffee in the morning, you will actually save a particular amount of energy. In fact, it equates to $325 saving off your energy bill. Now, of course, you don't simply have to turn the machine off at night to get the savings. Uh, you can, there are machines out there that have built-in timers. You can buy built-in timers or buy, buy timers to build into the machine that turn the machine off automatically. There are machines with eco mode. Uh, and by the way, those eco modes are quite effective. They're reduced by the energy usage by half when they're in operating. So it's quite an effective way of doing things. Let's move on to milk. What can we do here? All right. Now, obviously it's not just the milk that goes into the cup that's wasted or used or consumed. It's the milk that goes down the sink as well. And one of the interesting findings that we had here that kind of ties in with some of the work we've done in automation is that you can actually reduce your milk wastage by dozens of liters a day by simply implementing accurate milk dosing systems inside your thing. It doesn't have to be as, as expensive as an Uber milk. It can be the juggler system. It can be even as simple as putting a line marker inside of your coffee jugs to make sure you fill it up to the right level every single time and making sure that your people fill it up to that level um, or that you yourself are filling it up to that level. Um, so you're reducing milk wastage. I mean, that, that would go a huge way. As I said, liters a day, dozens of liters a day. And that's again, hundreds of dollars every single month that you're literally tipping down the drain. Finally, food wastage. Now I'm not a chef. I'm not someone that knows a whole lot about how not to waste food, aside from trying to minimize what you put in the bin. Um, so I'm not gonna go too far here, but suffice it to say that if you can come up with menus 
um, that utilize more of a whole portion of the product, whole fruits, whole vegetables, whole parts of an animal, creative ways of minimizing waste, that would go a long way. And again, way more than focusing on paper cups. Now the question might be asked, where does this fit in with the entire life cycle analysis of coffee? I mean, right, because you've got to get coffee from one side of the world to the other, surely trucking tons of coffee around the world, both trucking on donkeys and on boats is going to have a huge, a much bigger impact on the environment than, than you know, actual you know, drinking of the coffee, producing and drinking of the coffee. Well, we did a, life, a broader life cycle analysis after we did this life cycle analysis to answer this question. And as you'll see from this graph, consumption of coffee dwarfs every other category. So, so ultimately, I mean, the power is in our hands to, to make small changes to have a bigger impact on the environment. It's in the hands of baristas, it's in the hand of cafe owners and roasteries. There are a few other ideas that we have, but you can find a whole lot more about that in the blog that we've written. We've written two blogs now on this particular subject that are available on our website and should be available in a link in this video. If you have some questions, you can feel free to put them in the, in the comments below. Any analysis you might have done, uh, things that I've missed, feel free to, to post them. Uh, any interesting ideas, we're always open to ideas. And until next time, uh, I'm Adam Carr from the Coffee Science and Education Center at Seven Miles. Have an awesome day.